CataractCoach.com. Nanophthalmic eye cataract surgery. These are eyes with a less than 20 millimeter axial length. Very tiny eyes. Look how small the eye is compared to the fixation ring. The white to white or corneal diameter is eyes very tiny. You can see this patient has quite a dense posterior subcapsular cataract with some nuclear changes as well. So making the rexus, important to get the right size rexus. So because the eye is small, this looks like a mega sized capsule rexus. But it's just five millimeters. And I know that because, of course, my forceps are marked off, as you see here. So that's a for, for sure five millimeter rexus. Now, with a shallow anterior chamber like we have here, you don't want to prolapse the nucleus out of the bag. So I'll do some very gentle hydro dissection, tapping the nucleus, keeping it in the bag. And the nucleus is not super dense, but it has a decent amount of nuclear sclerosis. So we'll tap it here centrally. I want to get this thing to spin a little bit. As you know, I like the nucleus to spin in a case like this. I'm not going to chop it right off the bat. Instead, we're going to groove. We're going to do a stop and chop. Well, why? Why not just chop it? If you chop it, each half is 50%, correct? If you groove like this, a wide groove and debulk the center of that nucleus, now each half is smaller, maybe 40% or 40-something percent. So a little bit more working room. So I'm using the FACO probe here, digging a central trench. So I'm going to do a stop and chop technique. Yes, I love FACO chop, but there are times like in this case where I think a stop and chop works pretty well too. And again, the advantage here is that we're debulking. Look how I'm making the groove wide, plenty wide. And I want to get sufficiently deep in there. And now, can we just split the nucleus? Let's crack it in half. There it is. Let's ensure the crack goes through. Beautiful. Now we can do the chop maneuver. So bring up one half of the nucleus here, just partially out of the bag, chop off a corner. And now I can emulsify this. So this has given us a lot more working room because each nuclear half now is a little bit smaller. You could even do divide and conquer to end up with four quadrants. And each quadrant, of course, would be less than 25% because you got to take into account the amount you removed from those grooves. So again, there's the second half now, chopping it. Yes, by the way, you've noticed we have sped up the video at 2x normal speed. And I just want to show you the entire case here. And everything was pretty good. Good control here. We've got to be very cautious of these tiny eyes, that the whole anterior segment is a lot smaller than a typical patient. And so now the last of the nucleus comes up. I don't want that capsule to come forward, so I'm going to keep that chopper there in that safe position, as I call it. Let's get that epinuclear shell up out of the bag as well. And there you go, cleaned up pretty nicely. Switching over now to do cortex removal. And in this case, it's going to be a little bit of a surprise. Watch carefully. Tell me if you know what it is. So taking out the cortex, that all looks pretty good. Good zonular support, no issues there. There you go. It's cleaned up pretty nicely. More about that surprise later. Filling up the capsule bag here. Going to put a single piece acrylic lens in the capsule bag. Going to do some capsule polishing up here. Just a little bit. Here comes the lens. Now, you, I made the incision slightly larger at the beginning of the case because this lens is a very tight fit. Think about it. This is a 32.5 Doppler lens, so probably it's 50% thicker than the typical eye well that we put in the eye. That's a thick lens. And you can see it's a 6 millimeter optic. There's the length, 32.5. 6 millimeter overall diameter, but the focusing part is substantially smaller, perhaps 5 millimeters. And now we'll remove the viscoelastic. Remember that surprise I told you about at the beginning? When we're doing cortex removal, watch carefully. There's a big piece of cortex sub-incisional. And we're going to get that out there at the end. It's still there. This is the tough part with these cases. Sometimes you can't tell. But there's that big optic in the eye. Again, it looks positively huge in this tiny eye. And then I can see, I can tell that there's something there sub-incisionally. I try to loosen it up with the eye probe, um, or aspirate it with the eye probe after loosening it up with a 27 gauge cannula. There it is. You do not want to leave that in the eye. So nicely done. We'll seal up the incision. Call this a day. So nanophthalmic eyes. Now I'll give you a hint here. In the U.S., the highest power single piece of acrylic lens you can get is 40 diopters. Don't do primary piggybacking. Put in the max power. If you think your lens calcs call for, let's say, 46 diopters, just put in the 40. Put in the max power we have. You can always come back if you need to on a later date, put a piggyback lens in, if there's room, and there may not be room. And now finally, at the end here, we're going to do a little limbal relaxed incision to treat that against the rule of stigmatism. And you can see, again, how small that corneal white to white is compared to the fixation ring. Beautiful case. Thanks for watching.